In this video, I will define what it means for two sets to be equal, and then I'll show you some examples. So here is the definition. So let's say we have two sets, A and B, so A and B are both sets, and A and B are considered equal if and only if they have the same elements. So a more precise way to express this idea is to say that A and B are equal if and only if, for every element in A, it is also an element in B, and vice versa. So for every element in B, it is also an element in A. And if this condition is satisfied, then we can say that A is equal to B. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you some examples of how we can apply this definition and see if we can figure out whether two sets are equal or not. Moving on with our first example, let's say we have two sets, A and B. So let's say A is defined to be, so this symbol means defined, so let's say A is defined to be the set that consists of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And let's say B is defined to be the set consisting of the numbers 3, 1, and 2. And now the question is whether A is equal to B or not. And in order to answer this, we just go back to the definition. A will be considered to be equal to B if they have the same elements. And going back here, obviously they do indeed have the same elements. And that's why we can conclude that A is equal to B. So you can see that the ordering does not affect the equality of sets. A set only cares about whether an object is an element of itself or not. It carries no information about the ordering of its elements whatsoever. So the ordering that you see over here is really just the order in which the numbers were written down, and this information is not stored inside the set. So if you see two sets, just disregard the ordering and then compare what elements they have. If they have the same elements, then they're equal. Now moving on to the next example, let's say this time A is defined to be equal to the set consisting of the four numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and B is defined to be the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And now the question is whether A is equal to B or not. And the conclusion is A is not equal to B. And to see why this is true, we can go back to the definition. So if A is equal to B, then it must be the case that for every element in A, it is also an element in B. And if you go back to this example, you can see that 4 is an element of A, but 4 is not an element of B. You can see that 4 is not an element of B. And so you can see that the condition for equality is not satisfied. And that's why we can conclude that A is not equal to B. So now we move on to our final example. So let's say this time, a is defined to be the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and B is defined to be the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 3. And now we want to figure out whether A is equal to B or not. And in order to do this, once again, we just go back to the definition. So if A is equal to B, then every element in A is also an element in B, and every element in B is also an element in A. So if, if we can check that this is true, then we will be able to conclude that A is equal to B. So first of all, let us check that every single element in A is also an element in B. So first of all, you see that 1 is an element in A, and incidentally, 1 is also an element in B. 2 is an element in A, and 2 is also an element in B. Also, 3 is an element in A, and 3 is also an element in B. So now you can see that every single element in A is also an element in B. And now we work the other way around. Now I want to show that every element in B is also an element in A. So we do the same process again, but we reverse the roles of A and B. So you see that, first of all, 1 is an element in B, and incidentally, it's also an element in A. 2 is an element in B, and you can see that it is also an element in A. 3 is also an element in B, and 3 is also an element in A. And so you can see that for every element in B, it is also in A. And so this allows us to conclude that A is indeed equal to B. So what this shows is that is that a set does not care about repeated elements. The repetition of 3 over here does not affect the status of 3 being an element of B. So if you see two sets and you want to determine whether they're equal or not, just disregard their repeated elements and then compare what remains. If all the elements in A are in B and all the elements in B are in A, then the two sets are equal.